Welcome everybody to the lecture of how to use food preparation equipment. The unit code is SITH triple C zero zero one. Uh, we'll be going through all of the slides today. Feel free to come back and re-watch any portions or all of the lecture recording. Um, if you guys get stuck anywhere or need any questions answered, don't be afraid to send me an email or ask me in person. My email is admin at wisemaneducation.com.au. Uh, we'll be going through the activities as well. So as we complete activities, you can take um, your time to complete them as you go. Pause the video and complete those activities and when you're ready come back and we can move forward throughout the slides in the lecture. So let's begin. Select food preparation equipment 1.1 Confirm food preparation requirements from recipes, uh, list and other workplace information. Food preparation depending on the recipe. There will be different food preparation requirements. Some recipes will be easier to make and require little preparation, whereas others will require more planning and preparation in order to achieve the best results and save time in the long run. Um, if in your workplace you are given a standard recipe and it might have a limit for the serving size to be 6 or 10, essentially what you're trying to do, you know, if you're going to serve for one or if you're serving for 20 you'd need to multiply or divide accordingly to what you have so recipes uh, a typical recipe include a name a short description of the food a picture showing the end result uh, a section listing of all the ingredients and quantities that are required and a method section detailing the steps um, of you know what you'll need to follow and some of the equipment that you'll need and use during the production process. Preparing food and equipment. Mise en place is a French term meaning set in place and it is used to describe the planning and preparation of equipment ingredients before serving food. This means everything that is required to make the meal should be prepped and ready before you start cooking. And if you want more um, information on that uh, you can go on to the link provided and you'll find a larger description and more in-depth information on that. But essentially, all you have to know is mise en place is a French term, meaning anything that needs to be prepared, including equipment and food items, need to be prepared and ready before we start the cooking process. Workplace procedures. All workplaces will have their own procedures that you must adhere to when preparing and cooking food. Commercial time constraints, uh, orders and instructions can be given to a member of staff verbally or in writing and should include the time requirements. It is important that preparation is completed in the time so food can be cooked and served to constraints of service. So if you think you've never worked in a restaurant before, and all you've eaten at are fast food places, it might become difficult to wrap your head around. Um, most high class restaurants will only create your item once you decide to purchase it. But fast food, as the name suggests, is a lot quicker. So they would have already pre-prepared a lot of your foods and when you ordered it, they've assembled it or the shortest period that they could assemble it in and they've served that to you. So sometimes fast food is not you know, realistic in the sense of restaurants because the time frame will be different. Uh, most restaurants will give you a time frame as you sit down so you will need to adhere, you know, if they tell you, okay, your entrees are coming out in the first 10 minutes and then it will be 15 minutes from there on for your main meals and then we'll give you another 10 to 20 minutes for your desserts so depending on how quickly you'd like them. Usually we start off with beverages as we'll make more money on beverages so we'll start straight away. So we'll um, offer customers any beverages or any specials or any boutique beverages or draft beers that we have on tap 
and we will offer that to them as quickly as possible because we know that will keep them busy, they will have the conversations going and it allows our chefs to really focus on the meals instead of rushing through each item. Storing and handling food. Food will need to be stored in different ways so it keeps at the right temperature, is safe from contamination and lasts longer. It should state on the packaging how it needs to be stored and this advice should be followed to make sure you maintain the food quality. Storing different foods. How you should store these foods. Dairy products kept in a fridge, resealed and used within a few days. Dry goods. Stored in airtight containers in a dry, cool place. Fruit and fresh goods. Stored in a cold area or in a fridge to keep fresh. Seafood. Stored in a fridge and used quickly before the use-by date. Alright, so now we're on to activity 1A. What information does a recipe include? So a recipe will include the item name, the quantity that you will serve, so the serving size, a final product picture, the ingredients that are included and required, the equipment that are required for the production, the methods that you will follow and there could be more things such as recommendations to improve the recipe or an amendment of what was done and had better results alright what does the French term mise en place mean so it's a French term means set in place so anything such as equipment and food preparation must be in place and completed before the cooking process can start Okay, so before we start cooking, we need all things in place and ready to go. Number three, what are the advantages of using this technique? So essentially, if you're organized, this is an organizational technique, right? So if you've got things in place, you're not running around, taking longer, you've got things ready. So essentially, you can have it down to a consistent time frame instead of, okay, when you get the order, you're now cutting your veggies every time and then moving forward with production, it takes a lot longer. So you're allowing your uh, production time to be cut maybe you know down to 10 minutes from where it would usually take you half an hour to 35 minutes to produce that same item. So you'll be able to make more money eventually. How would you find out the correct way to store and handle food? So hopefully it should be written on the packaging itself, on the storage conditions, where it should be stored, what, uh, how we need to handle them. If not, we need to contact the supplier and ask them as they will be knowledgeable on the product that they've supplied and ask them what their suggestions are for the product, how to store them, how to use them, what's the duration. We also need to look at those use by dates and best before dates so we can adjust to our preparation schedule as well so we can incorporate that into our schedule. Alright, so complete those questions, a few lines for each of them should be fine and then once you're done unpause the video and come back and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, 1.2 identify and select knives and other routine and specialized equipment suited uh, to the food preparation task. So this is all about understanding what you need uh, most recipes will tell you what sort of equipment you need, but um, a lot of it is about self-preference and how you like to do things as well and what you find easier for you, which might not be the same as others that work with you find the same um, things easier. So you'll need to understand how you work well in the kitchen. So specialized equipment, this is, uh, there is specialist equipment available that can help speed up processes in the kitchen to make preparation and cooking easier. It is important that you identify and select the right equipment you need for the type of food you're making. So there is no point in um, buying a tandoor if you need to make fried rice. So that, you know, you might need to buy a wok style duck build stove where if you need to make a naan bread, you might need to purchase a tandoor. So depending on what you need, um, and what you're going to make, you will decide on what equipment you'll use. Selecting the right knives. Using the right type of knife to prepare food is important for safety reasons. 
but it will also make cutting easier and faster in the kitchen. There are many different types available, so it's useful to know what to use uh, them for to ensure you get the best results. So, essentially you want to use a serrated knife for soft skin items, you want to use a, if mostly, most chefs will just use a chef's knife if um, they're comfortable using it, depending on their hand size, also will depend on how thick or thin the blade is. A lot of um, chefs really like thin blades. Uh, a lot of chefs will like tall and thick, wide blades. Um, they might like to use the um, the cleaver as a you know. Constant. It just depends on the person. But a lot of it is to make sure that your knife is always sharp and at the sharpest point and it's straight, so you're not getting um, blunt cuts and damaging the products that you are cutting. So different types of knives, we've got butcher and boning, so this is used to cut meat, remove bones from the meat, cut any fish. We've got the chef's knife which is used for chopping, slicing and dicing, but usually this is an all-rounder. Then we've got the filleting knife, mostly used to remove bones from fish and um, stripping things into uh, schnitzel size or fillet size. Um, portions. Then we got the pallet knife which is used for spreading, smoothing or lifting. Um, essentially this is not you know something that you would be really focused on but it's more something to do with serving. Then you get the utility knife for slicing smaller ingredients you know you could use for uh, pairing or things like that. Vegetable knife using for chopping and slicing vegetables and then you've got the bread serrated knife for cutting through bread so You're really identifying what you're doing what the task is and then choosing the appropriate knife accordingly uh, Knife sharpening after a while knives will become blunt and will not give the best results So it is important to sharpen them regularly. This can be done using a sharpening stone or sharpening steel so you, or a honing steel, the, that won't really give you the sharpest edge, that will give you a straight edge but you want to go through the wet stoning process so you would dip the stone, you find the grit that you find most um, suited to your knife and then you would sharpen your edges accordingly so advantages of sharpening, sharp knives will cut easily requiring less pressure from you and they are less likely to slip when cutting so you will be safer so you want to let the knife do the work you don't want to be using your shoulders or your elbows to be cutting okay how to sharpen knives hold the sharpening steel pointed down on a chopping board and position the knife sideways at a 22 degree angle against the steel pull the blade backwards and glide down the steel repeat 10 times on each side of the blade if you want more in-depth, follow the link and it will have much more in-depth um, instructions for you. Sharpening safety tips. Keep the blade pointed away from you at all times. Make sure the sharpening steel is similar size to the knife you are using. Sharpen the knife slowly and don't rush. Rinse the knife well after sharpening. So you don't have any debris or any loose metal on there. Food preparation equipment. You will need to make sure you have the right tools for food preparation. Some equipment is essential and some appliances are useful for speeding up processes in the kitchen. Common food preparation equipment includes blenders, food processors, graters and mixers. Different types of equipment. So we've got blenders where you use to mix soft food and liquids together into such things as smoothies, milkshakes and soups. Food processors are used to chop, shred, slice and mix soft or hard foods such as vegetables. Graters we're using to slice foods to scatter over dishes such as cheese, vegetables and fruit. Mixers we're using to combine ingredients together into creams or such as you know um, eggs and flour into dough. Then we got planetary mixers to mixing dough into cakes, breads and pastries. For mandolin slices, this cuts thin slices of fruit and vegetables. Peelers, corers and slices to peel and slice fruit and vegetables. Scales are used to weigh the ingredients. 
thermometers are used to check the temperatures of each item whether cold or hot and you need to use the item appropriately uh, whisks uh, mixing they're used for mixing and whipping food to form a smooth mixture and then we have cutting boards which you always need to use and cutting boards uh, in Australia are color coded so we've got green for vegetables yellow for poultry white for cheese um, brown for cooked meat and you can also use white for breads as well um, then we've got blue for seafood and yellow for poultry so chicken or birds or any any sort of flying um, meat that you're cutting but yeah make sure you don't mix any you know you're not cross contaminating you're not cutting vegetables on the green and then going on to cut any meat on there so you're not cross contaminating the item okay so what are the different types of knives used in preparing food so there are a lot of different types of knives you want to list all of them as we have listed them before we've got the butcher and burning knife the chef's knife filleting knife pellet knife utility vegetable and bread knife so list them all and let's move on to the next question explain how you would maintain knives and why so you want to make sure your knives are straight and have the sharpest edge possible you can do this by using a sharpening stone or a honing steel so which will make your knife edge straight and sharp to do this you need to follow the processes that we listed before and the reason that you do it is so that your knife is allowed to do most of the work as it is the sharpest and it allows you to stay much safer as it won't slip out of your hand or on the board you know cutting you okay name different types of food preparation equipment and give a short description of their purpose so we've got many different types maybe choose five different types of food preparation equipment we've got mixers we've got whisks thermometers blenders we've got ovens um, there's so many things so list five and just give a short description of what they are once you've done that and pause the video and we can move on to the next one okay 1.3 confirm cleanliness of equipment before use cleaning and sanitizing equipment the difference between cleaning and sanitizing is cleaning removes dirt and grease from worktops or any equipment using warm water and cleaning detergent sanitizing removes bacteria from surfaces using hot water and sanitizing chemicals cleaning maintenance tips wipe down any surfaces utensils or equipment after use to avoid buildup of dirt or bacteria make sure the cleaning agents are suitable for the type of equipment you are using clean and tidy up as you go along to maintain cleanliness so you don't build up a big mess clean floors to remove any food dirt or bacteria regularly and follow a schedule so you know when things are being done or if somebody replaces you they can maintain the same process that you are activity 1c what is the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? Explain the definition of each one. So cleaning involves removing dirt, grime and grease using detergent and hot water from any surface or equipment. When we're talking about sanitizing, it's using um, hot water and uh, sanitizing chemicals to remove bacteria uh, from any surface or equipment. So why is it important to clean and sanitize equipment and how often should you be done so all equipment should be cleaned regularly there should be a maintenance log any time that you've used an item after use you should be cleaning it before use you should be if you are not sure when it was cleaned last you should be cleaning and sanitizing it before you use it and cleaning and sanitizing it before after you use it we should also be air drying so we remove any moisture that might be there um, so and how often we should do it anytime we feel necessary that um, we are unsure that it's clean and 
um, there are no bacteria present. Explain what the four step effective cleaning and sanitizing process is. So we're making sure to wipe down any surfaces. Um, we're making sure to tidy up the process. So we're removing any dirt or grime that might be present on the surface or equipment. Then we're putting it in hot water for cleaning. Once that's out for cleaning, we will sanitize the equipment or surface. Once it's been sanitized, we will let air dry or dry completely with a paper towel so that all the bacteria is removed. All right, so once you guys have completed that, come back and we can move on to the next one. 2.1. Assemble and use equipment safely and hygienically according to manufacturer instructions. Using equipment safely. Uh, before using equipment for the first time, it is important to read manufacturer instructions to find out how to assemble and use it correctly. You should only use equipment that you have been trained to use and are confident using. If you're unsure, ask a supervisor or manager to help. Using equipment hygienically. Why is it important to remove any bacteria from the equipment? It's also important to follow health and safety guidelines at work to keep equipment in good condition so it will last longer and to also keep the workplace safe and clean for everybody involved. Cleaning agents. There are different types of cleaning agents available that will help you get the best results in the kitchen and remove any harmful bacteria that can stick to surfaces, floors and dishes. The types of cleaning agents found are surface sprays, floor cleaners, bleach, washing up agents, dishwasher tablets and many others. Now I would prefer you use food grade cleaning agents as if you do leave some residue, if it's biodegradable it won't hurt the consumer as much as it would uh, these commercial grade um, strength or industrial strength chemicals that are cheaper than these biodegradable food grade ones but it creates um, a lot more safety for the customer or anybody that's using to consume any food compared to using um, the industrial strength types. Cleaning safety. You will need to be cautious when cleaning products such as uh, using cleaning products such as bleach to ensure it doesn't come into contact with your skin or clothing as it can damage both. Um, it is best to wear cleaning gloves to protect your skin and wear an apron or old clothing that you don't mind getting damaged. You should also try and wear uh, respiratory or safety masks so you don't breathe in any chemical fumes while you use this. So try and do it as much as possible so you know, to alleviate the pressure on any systems that might be affected while you're using chemicals. Safety data sheets. So, material safety data sheets will come with your um, the chemicals that you purchase. If they don't, you could ask your supplier to provide you with uh, material safety data sheets. So, an SS SDS includes details of the following, which are the cautions and hazards of chemicals how to handle chemicals safely, how to store them safely, emergency procedures, how to dispose of the chemicals. All workplaces handling chemicals should have these sheets available for staff to refer to. Safety data sheet. Um, the work health and safety regulations states that all manufacturer or importers of hazardous chemicals must prepare an SDS and a supplier must also provide this document to a workplace when supplying chemicals to them. Activity 2A. Why should you read the instructions before using any equipment? So first of all, if you're using any equipment, you need to know what the proper functions are. So you don't damage the equipment, you don't hurt yourself, and you don't hurt any other people that are around you. So once you know what the proper way to use the equipment is, then you won't damage the equipment and it will last longer. Why is it important to use equipment safely and hygienically? So if we're using equipment safely and hygienically, 
we know that the equipment will last longer but it will also give us peace of mind that our customers will not get sick or anyone consuming our food will not get sick and that they can also have confidence in us that we're using proper hygienic procedures to use equipment. What is a safety data sheet and when should it be used in the workplace? A safety data sheet should be used whenever you're using any material that is unfamiliar to you so you know that in case of emergency or any hazards that may come up on how to deal with it, who to call, what steps to take next. The safety data sheet will tell you what the chemical is, how to, um, if it's been consumed or if um, any emergency actions need to be taken on what to do um, if those problems do arise. So complete these questions. When you're completed with these, come back and pause the video and we can move on to the next one. Okay, 2.2. Prepare food items using suitable knives to make precision cuts. Make precision cuts. Precision cuts are popular among professional chefs. They make cutting faster and more effective and can also enhance the presentation of food. A recipe will usually specify what types of cuts is required. There are many different precision cuts so it is useful to know what each one means. The reason why we use precision cuts is when the cooking time is affected. If you have one large dice and one small dice it will not um, cook the same time so you want to have a uniform um, you know cutting size or slice or br uh, your brunoise whatever you choose to pick in your recipe so popular precision cuts such as brunoise cutting vegetables into small precise three millimeter cubes for sauces and soups chiffonade slicing food into fine shreds such as lettuce, kale and herbs to garnish dishes. Concasse, referred to as tomato concasse, a uh, tomato peeled, seeded and chopped to add to a sauce or salad. Uh, and then we've got the jardinieri, cutting vegetables into thick batonet shapes such as carrots. Right. Then we got julienne, cutting ingredients into matchstick shapes of three millimeter by three millimeter by five mil by five centimeter. Use for coleslaw, um, Macedonia uh, vegetables, fruit sliced and served raw or cooked in cubes of four millimeter, four millimeter by four millimeters. Um, Maripoy, finely chopped carrots, celery or onions, used in sauces, stocks and soups to enhance the flavour. And Passan, cutting vegetables into a country style, which is a rougher cut compared to precision cuts. They're much bigger, they're much thicker because you're going to bake them essentially. Alright, activity two. What are precision cuts and why are they used? So precision cuts, they are a specific list of cuts with specific directions. Most of these will be found in recipes given to you. The reason why chefs use them is so that the items are presentable, look consistent, and the cooking times are not affected by varying types of um, cutting sizes so that all of the items are cooked to a uniform consistency. List some popular precision cuts and what they are used for. So we've got all the um, cuts that we talked about. So we got julienne, we got passan, brunoise, chiffonade, concasse. So just mention those um, cuts there and you could mention what they're used for. So you could say the brunoise is used for, co um, for sauces, the chiffonade is used for garnishing, concasse is used for salads, the jardinia is used um, for let's say your um, your entrees for let's say to consume on its own and you got the julienne for coleslaw the macedon which is essentially you can use for um, you know fried rice or any any sort of um, you know dish 
that you're going to be using kibs for yeah so just include those and the uses for them and then once you're done come back and we can move on to the next one alright 3.1 maintain equipment cleanliness using appropriate cleaning agents uh, cleaning equipment it is important to find the right cleaning products for the equipment you're using why is it important it could damage equipment if you use incorrect cleaning practices or products cleaning it correctly will maintain its appearance and performance cleaning it properly is essential for removing any dirt bacteria or food from the equipment cleaning safety safety tips when cleaning switch off and unplug all equipment before cleaning read the equipment manual and follow cleaning instructions be careful when handling and cleaning sharp equipment don't clean any hot appliances let them cool down first take care not to drop or damage any equipment while cleaning cleaning materials types of cleaning materials and equipment that you're going to be using so we've got cleaning cloths cleaning and sanitizing agents dust pans and brooms garbage bins and bags hand towel dispenser mops and buckets sponges brushes and scourers tea towels and there are many more but these are just some of the things that you need to remember for now so activity 3a how would you find out the best way to clean and maintain equipment so first of all you'd always want to find instructions from the manufacturer on how to deal with these um, equipment if you can't find instructions you can ask your manager and if your manager does not have any clue on how to do so you can always search on Google or get in touch with the manufacturer directly to provide you with some directions on how to clean and use the equipment and maintain it. Why is it important to use the right cleaning products? The reason why you want to use the right cleaning products is so that you have um, you know, cleaned the item to its optimal condition you get the most out of the equipment and you have no bacteria or any dirt or food left in the equipment so you're not contaminating any future foods that you might be using with it what are the different types of cleaning materials equipment and what are they used for uh, we've got many different types of cleaning equipment um, you've got your tea towels you've got your you know the single use um, paper towels which are used to dry and wipe up any spilled liquids um, you've got mops and brooms to clean floors to clean and sanitize floors uh, you may have um, scourers sponges brushes to clean any de um, debris or food off equipment or cutlery you've got if we're talking about specialized equipment you may have your um, dishwashers or glass washers to wash your glasses and cutlery and your plates and bowls or any uh, cooking utensils that you might be using so materials wise you've got your bleachers you've got your sanitizers you've got your detergents and you've got your degreasers so you will only use them accordingly to its manufacturing um, you know what they are recommended so you wouldn't be using a degreaser on a um, serving plate as there is no need to you would just use a mild detergent and it would remove all the grease that is there but let's say if you're um, cleaning the the grill on your stove you might need a heavy industrial degreaser to take off the large buildup of grease over time so depending on the use that you're going to do and the thing that you're going to clean you need to address um, address that issue with the correct item and detergent or material okay so complete those questions come back when you're ready and we can move on to the next one okay 3.2 use energy water and other resources efficiently to reduce negative environmental impacts using resources efficiently always be mindful of the environment by watching the amount of energy and resources you use how to use resources efficiently don't cook food on a higher temperature 
or for longer than required. Read the equipment manual to find out eco-friendly tips. Switch off and unplug equipment after use. Don't leave water running. Use energy efficient equipment if possible. Why is it important? High energy and water consumption can cause pollution, damage to health, loss of wildlife habitats, global warming, uh, warming and water scarcity and also the increase of the price of those resources as they get depleted the price goes higher meaning your business um, will have to spend more to obtain those items all right how can you use resources efficiently so um, you know not using your resources to a level where they feel that they are being wasted not having water running not leaving on lights or equipment which are connected to electricity on if there's nobody using them um, not uh, using gas or having gas left on um, on pilot switches on stoves not having um, empty fridges running not having your ovens on or connected without having any items that need to be cooked or warmed up things like that okay why is it important to use resources such as energy and water efficiently as you um, you know go through a business you will find out that these things are costly so the more you use them the more um, you know the bills will pile up so first of all you want to save money second of all you want to be mindful of the environment as we use more of these you know uh, environmental you know ecosystems will get depleted such as habitats for animals there'll be less water in the environment so we won't be able to um, use them for other tasks um, as we produce more and more electricity we, as the world is dependent on fossil fuels so more and more fossil fuels will need to be burnt which you know creates more CO2 so you know global warming occurs you got climate change happening all those things as you don't if you don't follow um, you know efficiently using these resources you are contributing to the end of the habitats that we live in and your surrounding um, you know environment that you're in okay so complete that and come back and we will move forward to the next one so 3.3 maintain the condition of equipment and make minor adjustments as required within scope of responsibility equipment maintenance why is it important faulty equipment can be very hazardous and can cause foodborne, uh, foodborne illnesses burns and fires it will extend the life of the equipment if you maintain it the equipment won't cook food properly if it is faulty adjusting blades blades in equipment such as food processors may occasionally need loosening or tightening if the blade is too tight it can prevent them from rotating properly or if the blades are too loose they can come undone oiling machines electrical equipment will need to be oiled regularly to keep it running well this will involve lightly oiling around the joints of the rotary blade why is it important to maintain equipment on a regular basis explain what adjusting blades and oiling machines means and how you do this okay so for us to Im, um, maintain equipment on a regular basis means we give it a longer um, lifespan so we can use the equipment better we're not uh, spreading any foodborne illnesses or any bacteria towards our customers um, we're not causing any harm to our customers you know or us or potentially creating any future situations that might harm um, the people that are working with these equipments uh, what else so it is important you know essentially we're not the more uh, maintenance we do the less we will have to invest into these equipments so the more we oil them the better we clean them the more we look after them means we have to essentially in buy them at a um, less a regular basis so we don't have to put so much money out of our pockets into those newer equipments 
I'll explain what adjusting blades and oiling machines means and how you would do this. So when you would adjust um, blades, it depends on the machine, right? So if the blades are too tight, the motors might not be functioning properly, and then it would essentially not chop up or pro, you know process the food properly, meaning that your motor will get overheated and essentially burn out. If it's too loose, the blades could come undone and then fly and hit somebody in the face or on their body and then cause you know major harm as it will be in really quick um, speeds. So it will create some damage on someone. So the way you would adjust them is essentially you would use a manufacturer's um, instructions or you would hire somebody that is well versed in uh, maintaining these items. Oiling machines would also have instructions if your machine needs oiling. Uh, your manufacturer will provide you with instructions but if you do not know how to do so you will need to hire somebody who is skilled in oiling these specialized machines. So in cases of smaller businesses it's not something that we really need to worry about um, but more as in higher production businesses such as you know a candy factory or a nut roaster they will need large equipment which will need um, you know specialized uh, personnel who know how to oil and adjust machines and repair these items so you would do this on a regular basis so that you know essentially you can have a longer uh, lifespan for these equipments and you're not investing too much money into buying newer ones. Alright, complete that, come back and we will move on to the next one. So 3.4 Identify and report on unsafe or faulty equipment or rectify according to level of individual responsibility. Reporting faulty equipment. It is important to check equipment and look out for any faults or anything unusual. How to identify it if it, uh, an equipment is faulty? There could be a strong burning smell coming from the appliance. It may spark or overheat. It might not be working at the right temperature. Food won't be cooked properly or processed properly. It may be too hot to touch. How to report it? If a fault occurs, it needs to be reported to your manager or supervisor first. Who should offer guidance and replace it? So they will put in a purchase order or they will put in a maintenance request and they will conduct that and then you know, you'll be allowed to use those equipments. Aside from the workplace, faults should be reported to the manufacturer. If the equipment is unsafe, then the manufacturer should stop selling the product and investigate it further. Okay, 3D. How would you know if an equipment is faulty or unsafe? So it's making unregular noises, it's too hot, you can't touch it, it's got a burning smell from the motor, it's not producing the right um, you know, food quality or the same consistent sizes or something that you're not expecting to with the food and it's not processing it the correct way it's supposed to. Uh, how would you report faulty or unsafe equipment inside and outside of the workplace? So inside the workplace we would let our managers or supervisors know or if it's an owner of the business we'd let them know and then they would do a maintenance or purchase order for that equipment and replace it. Outside of the workplace we would let the manufacturer know so if there are dangers um, or if we have warranty we can have them replace it or if it's a problem with an item they can stop selling it to others so the other people aren't put in the same risk that you have been. Okay, So complete that and as this will be the last activity um, you would have completed your learner workbook so submit that to your trainer. Uh, if you have any questions just shoot me an email at admin at wisemaneducation.com.au um, or if you see me in person just ask me a question and I will try to guide you as, to the best of my ability. If you've, um, you know, see your trainers, they can also help you as well. If you have any feedback or need to ask any questions, just email me and I'll try to take it on to the best of my ability. And after this, we've got the multiple choice, so you can do that online. And we've got the other three assessments, which is the knowledge, skill and performance. So we will have to do that 
coming up so hopefully i will see you on the next one and take care